Today, we will be talking about TLS 1.3, that is Transport Layer Security version 1.3. So what is TLS 1.3? Well, TLS 1.3 follows along the lines of the original TLS, which was introduced by Netscape Navigator in 1996 under the moniker SSL 3. But you can see that the timeline has included a few different iterations of TLS as time has gone along with the latest version before 1.3 being 1.2 released in 2008. So TLS for its own is a cryptographic protocol. And as time has gone along, it is seen as necessary to increase the security mechanisms to not allow uh, hacking of the TLS protocol and to ensure that secure communications stay secure. TLS 1.3, which was standardized in 2018 by the IETF <clears throat> TLS workgroup, had 28 drafts with draft uh, RFC 8446 getting finalized in August of 2018. At this point in its life cycle, some vendors uh, might still be using draft forms of the TLS um, standard and not the actual final standard. So it's just something to be aware of. So why is TLS 1.3 even needed? Well, first of all, it is more secure than its predecessors. TLS 1.2, which is highly regarded and used amongst many of the websites for secure HTTP communications, has virtually an unlimited number of cipher suites that it uses, and those an unlimited number of cipher suites can cause uh, weakness in the encryption standards and they can be vulnerable to attack. On the other hand, TLS 1.3 uses only five cipher suites and more importantly, even than those five cipher suites, it uses what we call perfect, so perfect forward secrecy. Okay, Only strong encryption and hashing is used with TLS 1.3 and all handshake messages after the hello packets are encrypted, and this is a difference over the TLS 1.2 uh, standard. One other change about TLS 1.3 is that the packets cannot be decrypted passively, and there are some references that I've included on these slides for your reference. TLS 1.3 requires less handshake round trip messages in order to set up the communications between a client and a server. And doing this, it greatly reduces the latency uh, of the go back and forth of those handshakes. So what I can show you on this slide is basically the differences between the TLS 1.2 full handshake and the TLS 1.3 full handshake. What you will notice is the 1.2 handshake on the left-hand side, it does a server hello, and then it gets, it advertises what ciphers and what things need to be changed between the client and the server in order to set up the, the communication between the client and the server. That takes up, you know, two or three steps in order to accomplish that before the actual data can be uh, sent with the get HTTP and the response. With TLS 1.3, that overhead has been reduced and the client hello uh, includes a lot of the advertising of the capabilities that the uh, client is requesting of the server. So what you can see is that the round trip time takes only five steps with the TLS 1.3, whereas before with 1.2, it required seven steps. So this is a much more in-depth view of the client communication, even in TLS 1.3, but I will try to, you know, basically clear the, the confusion about how this works, okay? So this is a key exchange between an elliptical curve, uh, Diffie-Hellman, uh, perfect, per perfect forward secrecy um, communication setup. The client hello, basically now with TLS 1.3, includes a lot of the advertisements 
of capability that it needs to set up the communication link, including the SSL version, the cipher suite it's using, the signature hash algorithms, and the extensions if they exist. So that's the first step. The, the server will then communicate back saying that it acknowledges a lot of the capabilities that it has uh, going towards the client, including you know, the hello itself, the encrypted extensions that the server has that the client needs to know about, the certificate, the certificate verify, and then the fact that it's finished uh, with all of its uh, communication in terms of negotiation. Okay, at that point, the, hands, the handshake traffic secret is known by both the server and the client. Okay, at that point, it's finished, but the server and the client need to know that it's finished. And then encrypted data can then begin to be transmitted. At the end of the transmission, and this is important, at the end of the transmission, it has to have a close notify because basically the next session that will be set up between the client and the server will use a completely new key. And this cert and everything. So basically this is important. For TLS 1.3, this is effectively what they call perfect forward secrecy. Within the key site, active SSL module, there is new support in this latest release, version 1.6, that includes the TLS 1.3 capabilities. If you look at the options on the pull-down menu within the active SSL, you will now see that there is a TLS 1.3 moniker that you can select. Previously, the highest was TLS 1.2. The advantage here is that regardless of the minimum or the maximum version of TLS being used, we can select this with the active SSL from Keysight. Supported in the 1.6 version is all of the TLS 1.3 ciphers, all five of the ciphers that we mentioned there. And there's actually a, 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 a screen that's showing all five of the, the uh, ciphers that we have available. Okay, the full handshake, the one RTT. Okay, what's not supported in this release 1.6 is session resumption, the zero RTT, and what we call the encrypted SNI. Encrypted SNI is still in IETF draft form, and it will be added to the product once it is actually ratified. There will be more sessions to go in depth into how active SSL can assist with decrypting TLS 1.3 traffic. In the meantime, before that is the case, I wanted to provide additional research material uh, in the publicly available domain that you can go and do research for yourself on TLS 1.3. And you can find these indexes uh, in the slide available here. <laughs>